I'm Luann Sims, and welcome to Life After Baby on 1520 AM WCHE and streaming live on WCHE1520.com. From bottles to books, spit up to social media, diapers to dorms, and everything in between, each week I interview parenting experts. Today's guest is Maria Tassoni. Chester County Art Association's Facilities and Studios Coordinator. She has been with the Art Association for 19 years. She's also served as the Education Coordinator there, and she still does a little bit of that from time to time. She's also the mother of a -a four-and-a-half-year-old boy and a 16-month-old girl. Chester County Art Association is a nonprofit organization dedicated to educating, inspiring, and connecting people of Chester County to and through the arts. Maria is going to share her favorite Halloween crafts and tips on putting together last minute costumes. Welcome, Maria. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being with us today. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the Chester County Art Association? Well, we are the local arts organization for Chester County. We're a nonprofit 501c3. We offer year round classes for kids and adults with a very robust summer art camp. Our main location at 100 North Bradford Avenue in Westchester has two gallery spaces and a gift shop, which is great for unique holiday shopping. I did not know that. Um, we're there Monday through Friday or Monday through Saturday, nine to five. And the next opening reception uh, for the upcoming shows is going to be Thursday, November seventh, from five to seven, which is open to anybody. You don't have to be a member. Any kids can come. Families. It's open to everyone. Excellent. And is that a new uh, gallery? Is that a new uh, show that's being displayed? Is that yes? the The gift shop will have all new uh, artisan items, and then the small gallery, our Houston gallery, is going to have a solo show of Bob Voynow, and the large gallery, the Allenson Gallery, is going to have a group show, which I'm pretty excited to see. It's a non juried show, which means whatever gets entered is going to go up, and the theme is classic literature in art. Oh. So Very cool. Work that's been inspired by classical works. Very cool. Now, which of these shows, since we are a parenting show here, which of these shows would be appropriate to bring kids to? Any of them? I believe any of them. Um, there is always, you know, the possibility that there may be a <laughs> new painting. <laughs> right. It just depends on how open you are to that. Uh, this doesn't happen too often, but they are there sometimes. Okay. So, yes, I think that's true. In any museum or art gallery, you need to be aware that that might be a possibility. Um, So, excellent. So, that's a great way to check out the Art Association and see what there is to offer and see the latest works up and and the gift shop, which I am always looking for interesting places to shop. So, that's good for me to know. So, um, you are here today to help us talk about Halloween, getting ready for Halloween, doing Halloween crafts and costumes. And we found out that you have two kids, four and a half year old and a 16 month year old. So as a parent, as well as a professional or an artist, you are right in the middle of uh, the costuming world, correct? I very much. Last year, we made all of our costumes and went as a family theme. Uh, I let my son dictate what he wanted to be, (laughs) which we all tried to tie in as a theme, so he decided he wanted to be Tamatoa, which is the evil crab from Moana. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know Tamatoa. Okay. Yeah, he's the one that sings the Bowie-esque shiny song. <laughs> nice. Very nice. I'm going to have to Google that to see what the costume is. I was pretty taken with him. <laughs> so were you, does that mean you were Moana? Uh, I was supposed to be, but uh, mom ran out of time to make her own costume, <laughs> so I went with what I had, which would have been a 90s hippie. Okay. <laughs> nice. And but, did you have the rock in there anywhere? Uh, well, my husband was Maui, Okay. Uh, although he looked a lot like a Viking-like Maui because we had to use the, the kilt underneath, but I, I made the grass skirt over it okay. so that he was at least... So definite covered. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yes, that's probably important when yes. kids are involved. <laughs> and, uh, the baby went as the little chicken, hey, hey. Okay. I'm going to have to go rewatch this movie. But, oh, I remember the chicken. Now I remember the chicken. How could I forget the chicken? Excellent. Excellent. So so I can tell, and, and Maria is dressed Halloween-y. I won't say you're in costume, but you have awesome tights on and a Halloween colored sweater on. So you already look awesome, even though we're... Um, a week and a half away, which is, I love, I think is, I also have a costuming addiction. My brother says I have something called juvenile costuming disorder because I've been dressing my kids in homemade 
ridiculous costume since they were born. But we have to understand, you and I have to understand, not everyone has this passion. So that is true. For people who maybe are new parents or their kids are, are wanting something a little more special or more unique, how can people begin to get these awesome ideas if, they, if they're not coming naturally to them? Well, usually kids do have an idea of something they, they want to be or do. But even if they're, super, if they're super young or if they really don't have anything, there's lots of things that you can do with regular clothing and a little bit of an enhancement. Okay. Uh, most animals are like that, like um, y- cats and bats, if you want to go classic Halloween. I mean, all you really need is a black outfit. And it, depending on weather, if it's super cold, sweatpants, if it's not, just regular tights. And taking an old headband and attaching ears to it. And, I mean, everyone has scissors, tape, right. glue, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, for the wings for a bat, you can always just cut apart a black garbage bag. Or if you are like me and have a tendency to keep things that you really shouldn't, like broken umbrellas or, yeah. <laughs> you know, they, it's still good. It's just the one side is floppy. Right. You could get that. You, I actually saw one where somebody cut the umbrella in half, took the stem off, and used those as the wings for the bat. That is very clever. I wouldn't have thought to do that. Now, do you keep things intentionally just for costuming purposes? I do. You <laughs> Not necessarily it has to be the idea that it's going to be costume, but it might be a project along the lines of some sort. Okay. Are you a theater person by chance? No. Just okay. I really like building and making things. Right. And I think the, the simpler you go, the I think the most ideal materials most of the time is cardboard, duct tape, and spray paint <laughs> go a really long way. And yes. if you need something that's thinner than cardboard, cereal box cardboard is fabulous for lots of projects. Okay, that's a good tip. Cereal box cardboard. So and 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 I know I have been in circumstances where I need cardboard and I'm looking in my basement for big boxes or anything I never thought of cereal they boxes. They make excellent templates. It's super easy to cut cuz it's not corrugated. It's right. thinner but it's still firm. It's better than like a manila um, folder right. because it's a little bit thicker than that. Okay. Spray paints easily. <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> Let's talk about um, what makes a good costume for a child because I have gotten into trouble myself where for example my son was a pencil and it looked fantastic but he couldn't walk down the street um, or he couldn't see out of it or so maybe let's talk about some things that are maybe requirements I know some of us who do get super excited about creating these things sometimes create things that might be um, dangerous or uncomfortable (laughs) so um, things that came to mind for me where number one you already mentioned it warmth yes right um, it it breaks my heart when I see um, a child in a in a beautiful princess dress and they have their school sweatshirt on top of it because they're frozen. So um, and we never know on Halloween, right? Right. Well, I, I grew up further north from here, so I mean we've had lots of Halloweens where there was actual snow on the ground. Wow. I went quite a few times as a witch with sweatpants underneath. <laughs> so. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> to a certain extent, I mean, depending on what you pick. There's not a lot you can do to make yourself. I mean, there's always the option of if you have like old nylons, you right. can put them on, cut the feet off, and that can, you can even put them on as sleeves underneath things. Um, That's a really good thought. So if you're doing a mermaid or something like that, right. and you want to have coverage, and there's you- always capes too. Like capes can provide an additional amount of warmth, and they're not very complicated to make. There's not a whole lot of sewing involved for a cape. Right. I mean, it's pretty much a rectangle. Right. <laughs> There we go. So if you're, if you're not a sewer, you can still make a cape. If you're not a sewer, there's always hot glue or that uh, stitch fix tape. Okay. Where you, It's just basically a roll of tape. You put it on, you put it over, and then you iron over top of it, and it's together. Excellent. <laughs> that, you know what? That was one of the other things I wanted to talk about. What if you're not a sewer? There are people who just say, I'm not crafty. I can't sew. I can't make anything. Stitch fix. Hot glue. Hot glue works amazingly for for seams. I did, uh, when I made our son's costume last year, I had to make giant pincher claws. And there was no way I was going to sew all of that together. Right. So I I basically cut out the basic shape. I took one side, I hot glued it all around the edge, 
put the other one over it and just turned it inside out. Look like it was sewn. Excellent, excellent. Hot glue. I have hot glued many a costume together. I have stapled some costumes together. Stapling safely. works too mm-hmm. in a lot of situations. Yes. So back to maybe some things you should think about. Um, Visibility, obviously, your child needs to be able to see. Um, And people need to be able to see your child. So if your uh, child wants to go as a ninja and they're all in black, you might want to consider, I don't know, some reflective tape or something. You you could do reflective tape, but you could also, I mean, ninjas usually have a sash. Make it a color sash. Make it something that's like day glow. Or you could really have them... um, make it a little more interactive for the kid and get a little bit of glow in the dark paint oh and let them paint like you know maybe like the seams or you know another part of their costume or their sneakers on the bottom like on the side of the excellent the, um the sole of the shoe excellent and i think that's maybe what a, a great tip that people need to know who don't do this all the time for fun that there is such thing as glow in the dark paint and oh, what yeah. a great way to involve your children um, another thing that I'll give away one of my secrets that I like to use um, along with spray paint is um, egg crate foam that you can buy for mattress, like a mattress topper. You can take that. I've made a giant hot dog out of that. <laughs> and you spray paint it. You can cut it and sew it and glue it and make almost anything. So if you need a kind of a bigger costume with some bulk, that's it. That's not too weighty. That's not too weighty. That's a great way to do it. I just recommend spray painting. Uh, maybe a week ahead of time if you can, because I have done it last minute, and it feels dangerous to the child to have them inhaling uh, some of those vapors. Well, that, and also if the humidity is a little too high, it might not dry in time. Yes, yes, and then you have a bit of a a bit of a disaster on your hands. Um, so, what about resources for costumes? Any any ways to save money that you're not spending, you know, tons and tons of dollars on this? Well, uh, a good example would be this year. My son has decided that we are going to be the cast of PJ Masks, Okay, <laughs> which is not necessarily the easiest to make uh, without having to buy the actual costume. Right. So uh, we did buy our sons. However, he wants my husband to be one of the characters, which finding that costume in my husband's size would be near impossible. So we opted instead for we got a green pair of pants. Like okay. sweatpants and a green shirt to match. And I will be painting scales on okay. and making a mask and a tail for him out of felt. There you go. Uh, the scales don't have to be complicated either. All I plan on doing is taking cereal box cardboard, cutting a scallop pattern, and literally just brushing the edge of it and keep moving it down and brushing the edge of it. And it'll make scales over the whole there costume. There you go. There you go. Felt is your friend too. Very inexpensive. Felt and foam. You can buy it in sheets at most craft stores. You can cut it. You can glue it. <laughs> staple it. Excellent. I could talk about costumes all day, but we need to take a break for a couple of minutes uh, and then we'll be back and maybe we'll talk about some crafting. Um, But before we do, I would like to give a shout out to our sponsor, A Taste of Olive, featuring high quality extra virgin olive oils and balsamics from around the world. They have two locations, one in Chestnut Hill and one right here in Westchester Borough. You can also find them online at atasteofolive.com and you can use the coupon code FAMILY for 10% off your order. So visit them in person and online at atasteofolive.com. We'll be right back with more Life After Baby. Welcome back to Life After Baby. I'm Lou Ann Sims, and I'm here today with Maria Tassoni from the Chester County Art Association. We're talking about all kinds of wonderful Halloween costume ideas. Now, one of the things that keeps catching me off guard is I always think of Halloween as being October 31st, because it is. But in the last 10 years or 15 years or so, we have had um, a plethora of Halloween activities like trunk or treat or parades at school that crop up a little bit earlier or the Westchester Borough Halloween Parade, which is coming up this week. And I realized that I don't have quite as much time as I thought to come up with a costume. So let's talk about you suddenly realize you need something in the next couple of days or we are only a week and a half away from Halloween at this point. What are some last minute things people can throw together to uh, come up with a decent costume on Halloween? I would say, uh, depending on, you know, if you want to get the whole family involved, you could easily all go as the Incredibles together. 
uh, wear red outfits, black masks, put cut out an eye for the shirt. Um, if your child's into wearing the world's car in San Diego, she's another easy one. Red jacket, red hat, black boots, black gloves. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, we could go as the notorious RBG Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> if you have a black graduation robe hanging out and a doily, it's yeah. pretty easy <laughs> to pull right. off. I have to say, when my daughter it's... was an infant, she was um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg quite yeah. a while. Before she really had the um, celebrity that she does today. <laughs> of course, everybody knew her, but... Uh, uh, maybe not as celebrated as she currently is. And that 50s style is very popular with various shows as the uh, Riverdale and the Sabrina the Teenage Witch remake. So there's uh, always Rosie the Riveter or uh, teens that are maybe into makeup could go as Roy Lichtenstein. Uh, he's the one that did the the pop art paintings that look like comic book with like the, the large dots on their faces. Okay. So they just outline their lips in black, their eyes in black, put like the dots on, wear a 50s style outfit. Boom, you're a pop art painting. Th wow, there you go. That's a very nice recommendation coming from the Art Association. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get the fine art in there somehow. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. So it doesn't just have to be a, a sheet and a two holes cut out for ghost anymore if it's uh, last minute. No, I've had various artists do the where they literally took an empty frame. They painted their face to look like a self-portrait, like maybe like a Vincent Van Gogh, tape up the ear, and then they went with the frame around their neck. Oh, wow. That's very cool. That's a very cool idea. I love that. Excellent. Well, thank you for those. Um, and I, you brought a Halloween craft to share with us today. Is that correct? I know a lot of us like to feel this cozy fall feeling and maybe do some fun crafts at home with uh, kids. Uh, I did. This uh, involves pumpkin decorating, but without all the mess of actually carving it. <laughs> uh, it's uh, If anyone's ever made their own shrinky dinks at home, uh, this is a way to do that. It's all it really takes is uh, getting number six plastic, which is most of the, the clear, the salad bar containers, when you go the clear plastic containers, you just cut out the uh, the top or the bottom, wherever's the smooth flat piece. Okay. And that is the same thing as Shrinky Dinks plastic. It is? It is. I'm... Do you know how much money I've spent over the years on, because <laughs> they do sell sheets of Shrinky Dink paper. That are it's not the exact same thing as those takeout containers. What? Yeah, <laughs> it's just number six plastic. Oh, if I had known this five years ago, I could have saved a lot of money. Okay, so go on. So, well, so you would, um, in terms of doing it for a pumpkin, you would basically cut out your design. If you're going with a straight jack o' lantern, you three triangles, two for the eyes, one for the nose, and a mouth, and you would cut it out in the shape that you want color the whole thing black with permanent marker okay. and you would put in uh, use a hole punch to make the hole so that you have some way to attach it to the pumpkin okay and uh, you preheat your oven to 350 uh, make a using tin foil you can make like a little tray you can put tin foil on a cookie sheet but you want it to be thinner so that it, it gets more direct heat and faster okay so you put the rack on the the, the lowest setting Pop it in there after it's preheated for only like three and a half minutes. If you've done shrinky dinks before, you'll see how it curls up and then it starts to lay right, flat. Right, right. And then the holes will shrink as well from the, the hole punch. And then you can attach it right to the pumpkin with either like T-pins or push pins, however okay. you want to do that. So like a pin size. So it, it's if you use a paper, a hole punch to right. make the hole, you're going to get the appropriate size once it shrinks to use Whatever a pin. Whatever size you make it it's going to shrink down to a third that size. A third, okay. So you want to make relatively large yes. triangles. <laughs> yes. um, if you ask them at the supermarket, they're usually pretty nice. They'll let you have a couple of the containers. Really? But I tend to save them from you know, like lunch or something. I'll yeah. wash it out, cut that part out, recycle the rest, and just if it's a flat sheet, it stores really easy. Just throw it in a drawer until you need it. What a great idea. Okay, so everybody space that out. Don't everybody go to the supermarket on the same day and ask for Nobody's going to give them to us anymore. But that is a um, that is a wonderful tip. And you could also make other things that way. You could make keychains or anything that you, you could make, make with shrinky dinks. Jewelry. Yeah, absolutely. What a wonderful craft. I love that. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, we'll move on to our next segment of Life After Baby that we like to call It Takes a Village. 
We don't always have all the answers, which is why we need to help each other out. So we polled some local parents about crafting Halloween costumes. So Laura said, this is a tip from from her, have a plan ahead of time so you don't waste time and money. And also remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. I am guilty of wasting an incredible amount of money. Um, I like to go to thrift stores to find things that I think might be uh, good supplies if I have an idea in mind. And I tend to buy multiple versions of things before I really have a plan. And because I get them from thrift stores, most often you can't return them. So I end up with a lot of waste. So um, I think that's where pre-planning might might uh i agree with that yeah. completely. <laughs> and you do the same thing <laughs> i have done that and, and remembering that it doesn't have to be perfect it's so exciting when you show something to your child and they think it's the most beautiful wonderful they can't believe they get to wear this costume i'm looking at the seam where i hot glued it and it's off center thinking oh that looks terrible you can't go out in that but your kid doesn't see that and, uh, uh, no, my son was so excited to tell all of his friends at daycare that his mom made his costume. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. And it doesn't happen that often anymore. No, and as he times, gets older, I'm sure it'll happen less. Less and less, <laughs> exactly. Um, Amy says, instead of sewing, use fabric tape. Velcro is another good one we didn't discuss. Hot glue or safety pins. Safety pins are little miracle workers. Yes, Absolutely. Um, so again, if it's not perfect, a lot of times you can make it better or uh, pin it up to be the size or shape that you need it to be by using some of those um, easy things. Okay, um, Jen says, keep it simple. Don't go crazy cutting out 200 stars when you can buy them for $2. Interesting point, right? <laughs> that is true, yes. Um. I- I can tell by the look on your face that you enjoy cutting out stars. Am I, I right? I do, actually. I, I have a, well, using scissors is one of my favorite. I've, I've done, like, the paper cuttings and different things like that. So okay. So that would be the kind of thing that I would look at, especially since my son is so young, as practice for him yeah. with scissors. Okay, right. Yeah, and again, another good way to but involve the children. she is correct. It is sometimes a lot less stress-inducing if you just buy one yes. part of it. And if you do have this obsession, yes, I have tried many times to, say, make a top hat out of felt and trying to get the brim just right and get it to stand up. And then I realize that I can go online and get one for less than $10 somewhere or go to a party (laughs) store. The dollar store even sometimes will have things like that that would help. Um, So sometimes you can buy pieces for for a lot less than uh, what your stress is costing you. Uh, And Rachel says, start simple. You kind of spoke to this earlier. Start simple with an old shirt, a hoodie, a dress, or et cetera, and then elaborate on that. And so I think especially if you're trying to mimic um, a character somewhere, it doesn't have to be the exact gown that Fiona wore in Shrek. It can just be any green dress or green anything, and and you can make it um, look like what you want it to look like, even if it doesn't match exactly. Props help a lot with things like that. Like, uh, I know a popular one this year is Bob Ross. Oh, really? (laughs) uh, Oh, yeah. Bob Ross is very popular this year. So, I mean, he basically wore denim blue shirts and jeans with, he rolled the sleeves up. All you have to do is cut out a cardboard, uh, what looks like a palette and a brush. Out of your cereal box, right? You can paint a beard on. You don't even have to (laughs) have an actual beard. Yes. You know what? That's a good tip, too, because I have made myself crazy trying to find a beard in the right shape or a mustache in the right shape to suggest something. But you can use face paint sometimes and create the effect that you want. Right. If you bunch up a paper towel, um, like crumple it, and instead of um, painting it on, you can blot it on. It looks more like hair Oh. or stubble, I guess I should say. How about that? So it's like if you were sponge painting a wall, that kind of effect. Exactly. Oh, excellent. That's a that's another good tip. Excellent. Well, are you willing to take our parent pop quiz? Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. We have a, a pop quiz that we like to, because life with kids is unexpected, and so are the questions in this segment. So since you are a parent, we can subject you to a question that we have not prepared you for. And I will pull up our wheel. We'll spin the wheel, and that will give you one of our parenting questions. So here we go. (laughs) We'll spin the wheel, and we'll see what we land on. Okay. Where is the weirdest place you've ever changed a diaper? 
So as you can see, these are not necessarily related to Halloween. Weirdest place I've ever changed a diaper. I mean, aside from just being in a random field, yeah. <laughs> um, I would say uh, we recently took the uh, Kate May Lewis Ferry. <laughs> I had to <laughs> nice. change your diaper on that. Oh, nice. That was unexpected, but uh, not that weird, I yeah, guess. No. <laughs> okay. Hey, Kate May Lewis Ferry, that's a, that's a pretty good one. I'm trying to think about myself. I think maybe... Outside the bathroom at the Phillies game. I don't know why I wasn't in the bathroom at the Phillies game, but I have a memory of being like on asphalt around a corner from a, I don't know. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Well, um, we are just about out of time for today. Thank you for tuning in to Life After Baby. Life After Baby was created by Leslie Hudson, hosted by Luann Sims, and produced by Bree Ezro. Our theme song is by Doug Keller. We'd like to thank Maria for joining us today. You can find the Chester County Art Association at 100 North Bradford Avenue in Westchester, Pennsylvania, or online at chestercountyarts.org, chestercountyarts.org. Also, we'd like to thank our sponsor, A Taste of Olive. When the kids are finally asleep, visit our website at lifeafterbabyshow.com, find our podcast wherever the finest podcasts are found, and follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Life After Baby Show. And don't forget to take care of yourself so you can take better care of them. Thank you.